still giving Labour a comfortable lead. But what the government could really do without is a by-election in what is supposed to be a safe Conservative seat. So when Barry Porter, the Tory member for Wirral South, died a few months ago, the Tory tears were shed as much in fearful anticipation as in grief. If the Tories had a prayer, it would be, oh Lord, let this by-election not be like all the others. So I went up to Wirral to find out if they've really got one. Into a suitably named pub in Wirral South prowls the great Grin himself. Tony Blair is campaigning in what he hopes will be his last by-election. Prime Ministers never go to them. The last time he has to share the glory with a candidate, the last time he has to force himself to say... Good morning. We're absolutely thrilled to be here because it's obviously going to be a very, very important by-election, not just... This is a meeting for disaffected voters, the spot to come for the really the tough questions. You can prudently go. What do you uh, think about the uh, social chapter as such? First of all, there's nothing wrong with basic minimum standards, provided they're not too onerous or stupid. It depends on what the legislation is that's being proposed. Well, I just, I just know Wirral. I've been here as a local MP for 20 years, and I know people here fear Labour. Labour has done a lot of damage to our area. Wirral South has been determinedly Tory, a place where old money and grand houses rub shoulders with the upwardly mobile, especially those who fled the militancy of old Labour in Liverpool by crossing the Mersey and starting again. 81% of the houses are owner-occupied, but there are some run-down corners, enough to keep the majority down to 8,000 and to remind voters that Thatcher's dream didn't work for everyone. Once upon a time, the Wirral was a place where everyone knew his place, typified by Port Sunlight Village built by Lord Leverhulme for faithful artisans. New Labour is trying to recruit both sides. I think there is no future for Britain as a low-wage, low-skill, low-technology economy. I should tell you, politicians always say this, but this is probably the most important by-election the country has known for a considerable period of time. By-elections are three-week media circuses, and by and large, they tell you very little about the result of the next general election. So you may well ask, why am I standing outside Clatterbridge Hospital in the Wirral? on a nippy Thursday in February, I'll tell you two reasons. The first is party morale. The Labour Party and the Conservative Party desperately do not want there to be a disaster here in Wirral South, not on the very eve of a general election. And the second reason is that deep down, we all hope that this by-election will be the mold breaker. This will be the one that unlocks all the mysteries of political life. Happens every time. Simon Hughes once won a famous by-election and can tell you how short-lived political fame can be. He's Liberal Democrat spokesman on health and knows how to capture media attention on the stump. But he's also realistic about the prospects in Wirral South. I mean, there's no way the Tories are going to win. The issue is for the Labour Party how well can they do and for us how well can we do and people will be comparing last time to this time. No by-election is the most important in history, they're just uh, the most immediate one and it's the one in the next three weeks. It probably is the last one of this parliament. Um, it'll be the best indicator of what the general election is going to do and we're holding our own, we're making sure votes don't go elsewhere and I reckon we'll fight a good campaign. It's a good place to be. It's uh, home territory for me, as you know. Them. Every by-election I go to is home territory for you. You always turn I, up and I've established I, I, some I, connection with the place. I said that because I knew you'd say that in reply. <laughs> did you go to school here too? I did. You're in Cheshire. I was born here. Tony Blair is a natural flesh presser, one who clearly enjoys the adulation that comes from looking like a winner. He can hug, cuddle, smile and wave with the best of them. Now and then he even mentions his candidate. This is Ben, he's the candidate. Hi. Thank you. Tories should be having a general election. I mean, everyone accepts that. You know, they're not having it because they don't dare have it, but they're not doing anything for the country anymore. Um, but I believe and, and hope that, that Ben can win it. He's a very good candidate. And I'm sure if he does, he's got a very good chance of holding it. Will the by-election take place? You ask the other guy. Well, just a fire station. Thanks very much. Tony Blair went to a local fire station to sympathize about threatened cuts in local services. He seemed very caring. It turned out that the villain of the piece was the local fire authority, which is Labour controlled. But I'm astonished. I'm astonished that our Labour visitors won't get a brief. Here they were, saying they were going to save a local fire station that is only under threat because Labour has put it under threat. 
Voters, as Michael Heseltine says, usually take the opportunity at by-elections to kick the government, and Les Byram for the Tories has been doing his best under difficult circumstances. Les Byram, she's a candidate. I hope you'll be able to uh, think about supporting me on the 27th of February. Quite doubtful. Oh dear. Michael Heseltine's quite right. By-elections are very different to a general election, but I really do detect that support is coming our way. In Heswell, where a better class of voter lives, Les Byram drops in for a quick snack at the Victoria Hotel. As it happened, we were in the back room chatting to some ladies, thinking of delivering the sort of kick that worries Michael Heseltine. Did it feel strange deciding, I'm going to vote Labour? Oh yes, it was very hard. Um, I've been a very active Conservative supporter for years. I was very strongly involved in the Conservatives, but I'm very disillusioned now. Well, I've always been a Conservative and I've been probably brainwashed by my family for many years into being <laughs> conservative before Margaret Thatcher went. Things began to go wrong in this country and it seemed to be that she was, it was a, a division. She created a division. I come from a socialist background. In the 70s, when I was working in hospital, I'm a nurse, the unions drove me mad because we would have patients ready to go to theatre and there would be a porter's strike and it really, it was really dreadful. So after that I decided I'm definitely going to vote Conservative. But now, after all these years of Margaret Thatcher, I am really aghast at, at the way, the, the way that, that Margaret said the rich have become richer and the poor have become poorer. I'm not a car driver. I use public transport and the Conservatives, if nothing else, have made such a mess of the public transport that it's just got to get better. I don't know. I, I just don't know what's in my best interest, what's in the best interest of the country, and I don't know with any clarity what the issues are on the parties. The parties seem to spend a lot of time um, insulting each other, mm, blaming each other, pointing mm. fingers. Is there any chance of any of you voting one way at the by-election and another way at the general election? No. No. I don't know. <laughs> what are the local issues? Please tell me. If things go according to form, Labour will take Wirral South comfortably. But some Tories believe that form is changing and the drift back to the government has started. It has happened before. That would wipe the smile off the face, even of a Cheshire cat. It was Disraeli who defined what a university...